Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on migration as a service. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the folks joining from different parts of the globe. My name is Noor Basha, a marketing director at Winwire Technologies, and I'll be a moderator for today's webinar. So as you know, uh, today's to topic is uh, migration as a service. And what we are doing is uh, we are planning a, a three uh, series uh, of webinar on migration as a service uh, and on in today's session we are going to discuss more around the migration as a service focus around content management system and the next two will be focused around infrastructure and app modernization so today what we are going to discuss is uh, how migration as a service can enable organizations uh, to reduce the complexity and risk of uh, moving your content management system to the cloud uh, along with one of the customer story. So before we start, uh, let me highlight a few housekeeping items. Uh, during the webinar, uh, please feel free to post questions and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. Uh, we are recording this session and we'll be sharing with you the presentation as well as the recording in next 24 to 48 hours. So with this, uh, let me introduce you to today's session speaker. Uh, Madan, uh, who has over 15 years of IT industry experience and is specialized in managing, designing on-premises and hybrid uh, solutions, uh, both around Office 365, SharePoint, and Azure. So with that, uh, let me hand it over to Madan uh, to help us walk us through the migration as a service along with a quick customer story. Madan, over to you. Thanks a lot, Noorana, for setting the stage. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Madan Marvatu, and uh, you know I'll be taking you know today's you know session covering WinWire migration as a service, and then we'll dive deeper into the migration methodology we follow. Uh, you know we learned it over you know more than a decade doing you know migrations for you know large enterprises, and we'll also look at the framework specifically for uh, content management and document management system migration. And uh, we'll take one of the case study and uh, we'll dive deeper into how did we achieve this overall migration in a much uh, you know, smoother in a way uh, you know, as customer expected. And then we'll also show you some kind of a sample, I don't know, what are the typical migration deliverables, you know, what's the project schedule may look like, you know, and how the engagement model may look like and how the team structure may look like those things you know, we'll cover it and then uh, we'll you know just in the interest of time we'll take the q a at the end uh let's, but you know please feel free to keep posting your questions and we'll answer you know as much as we can and then if you have any further questions we are always open you know to schedule a follow-up session and then you know take you walk you through that okay. um you know in in today's era moving to cloud is not even a question you know okay uh, are we moving to cloud those questions are probably like five to ten years now old uh, every cio definitely you now wants to move to the cloud uh, it's you know when and how is what uh, you know is the question as of today and a lot of times you know uh, people are slightly confused about okay how do i approach this you no know, migration is it like an upgrade you know what i used to do in my on-prem in a system from an earlier version you know to the current version so all those questions are there and then there are a lot of challenges as well um, so it, it is good to always kind of you know put together a success factor for any project in especially in migration projects in migration projects if i look at you know, what all the key success factors so how do we because it's going to disrupt almost every single user you know in your organization or maybe you know large amount of you know users and business units so uh, communication is the key how do we communicate you know with you know different you know site owners first of all how do we even find out who owns the site which was created probably 15 years back and uh, you know and then ensuring the best possible experience for high priority content there are you know certain specific you know sites maybe having a higher priority uh, and if the site is down for maybe a couple of hours you know you may have business impact so how do we make sure you know we are you know providing the best possible experience for them and then there are always critical business events you know just taking a you know very simple example finance department obviously cannot you know have any downtime during the quarter end or maybe that the quarter start right? so that's something that you know 
we always you know keep in mind you know there are you know specific departments for various reasons uh, will become critical for a certain period of time and you know how do we you know kind of adhere to their business you know timeline and uh, how do we make sure you know migration conflict you know if i move site a uh, which is having a dependency with you know site b how do i you know migrate them in the same phase rather than you know splitting them in multiple phases so those are all the you know conflicts and issues you know we love to identify and plan for it now and um, you know how do we do you know how do we plan for pilot and then you know create a base platform can be used for migration you know on a continuous you know, basis you know going forward right and how do we structure the team who interacts with the business users you know who reports the status to different business units you know who reports the status to IT team or anyone you know, who is peer heading you know this in a project and you know how do we make sure that the executive focus both from a customer standpoint as well as you know a partner like us you know how do we have the executive you know focus on this you no know, migration so all that kind of you no know, forms the sector sector this is not the only items but these are all the typical items you now we keep you know seeing and hearing you know, from different customers um, so what is windwise migration as a service so uh it's not a buzzword uh, for sure you know it's not just a buzzword you know it's actually a well defined um, methodology migration methodology and you know combination of processes uh, various you no know, predefined templates so that you don't have to start from scratch and automated tools and you know script to get the inventory analyze them and then you know uh, fast track the migration right and also a well defined engagement model and a team structure which is going to support all of these you know activities and how do we you know plan it there is a pro and no migration planning and sequencing activities so migration as a service is basically combination of all of these aspects and uh, in a typical migration um, there are three different scenarios one the first one being infrastructure migration to cloud so i have a lot of you know virtual machines and servers and all of this hardware infrastructure how do i migrate them you know to cloud right so that's the you know first migration scenario that's a different you know that's a uh, you know different engagement type and then the next and uh, you know more popular one recently is the content and documents migration to cloud uh, and then the last one you know being legacy app monitoring i have you know a lot of you know legacy apps custom built apps home grown you know applications from it how do i migrate them and you know leverage the latest and greatest tool set and feature set provided by cloud uh, that's a legacy app monitoring you know into cloud uh, just to be clear in this you know webinar you know, we are going to be focusing only on the content and the document management migration to cloud um what all you know contributes to migration of service you know for content management and document management system so starting from lotus notes hero file net dropbox or you know any saas platforms any content management and document management system uh, there is a proven migration methodology um, we have which you know helps customers you know move faster and have automated tools and scripts and we do leverage third party tools depending on the scenario you know we will have to we will come in and evaluate you know which tool mm-hmm. may best you know fit in because each tool we has you know its own pros and cons and each tool has its own pricing model so which one you know will fit for the type and volume of the content you have and how so you know you want to achieve it there are various factors so we do evaluate which tool you know will work for you and you know we recommend we kind of you know pretty much you know, use all um, you know all um, leaders in this migration docker you know a point docker and metalogix sharegate and fly for uh, tenant to tenant migration in office 365 uh, when i say you know content management system and you know document management system you know, i just want to take a minute on this you no know, slide uh, just to see if anyone you know has any of these you know platforms you know use if you are on any of these you know platforms we can you know help you um, migrate to office 365 or cloud it could be anywhere you know from open tax you know e room 
file net lotus nodes uh, shapepoint alfresco clone so one of the customer we have just recently you know discussed uh, they are healthcare uh, based you know customer based in norcal and uh, they do have you know they did have alfresco clone and you know life ray as you know one of the systems and they did have shapepoint on premises systems as well so they want to know kind of migrate all of this into office specific cloud so we kind of you know, help them and we can you know how the migration to be done and how do we plan it so the first step in the migration methodology uh, we envision you know we help customers you know envision the whole migration and not think like you know any other simple in you know, a project and you know it's more like an upgrade that you know thought process is something that you now we help uh, change it by having envisioning sessions we also help in stakeholder buy in and as a next step you know we do plan for a pilot uh, we don't want to you know kind of start with a migration of terabytes of content and then realize that you no know, it's not going to work for this customer so we always recommend highly recommend having a pilot round out and uh, what you know how do we you know take the sample data set you know for pilot that's a important you know factor uh we need to have all different you know complex site um set up that into the pilot not just the simplest you know sites to be you know migrated in the pilot so we need to have uh, low medium and high complex sites selected for pilot and then you know we roll out the pilot and how do we choose which business department and which, which business unit can be selected you know for pilot so that's also an important factor so we help kind of you know uh, customers in envisioning this and uh, and then you know we plan once the pilot is rolled out we document our learning we update our processes and customize it for the specific customer need and uh, plan for iterative migration so this is where you know the uh, iterative migration will take place let's say we go by one of the example could be you know we go you no know, business unit wise another option you know could be you know we migrate location specific you know site uh, so there are different ways in how we can plan the phases so we help customers in planning that uh, phases as well and then we start with the migration and once we start migration we always um, you know plan for training so that the users are not uh, you know sure you know how to adapt to the new system so user adoption is very very important and we also collect feedback Uh, both you know from the technical team as well as you know, from the business is that you know how this overall process is working out for is there any uh, you know tweaking and refinements we can do to improve this you know, whole process so that's something you know we always you know, do and the last one is you always you know, think of having a managed services to continue support the users you know, it could be you know, it can be called as a hyper care or you know, any any of those models we always recommend customers to having a managed services uh, once the migration is complete so that the users are not left on their own and they need you know something you know critical to be done there are three different you know phases in any migration project one is what you do before the migration starts that's the pre migration process you clearly understand you know your environment and a lot of times we hear from the customers that um you know there are only 20 sites i have there's only you know half a terabyte content there's no customization just no go start with the migration you know we don't you know recommend immediately jumping onto the migration we yeah. always no recommend having an assessment you know done a lot of times over a period of time um you wouldn't have realized that a lot of customizations have went through customers have you know done a lot of customization without it's knowledge that's something that would be always figured out in most of our migration projects so getting to know your environment before you jump onto the migration and backing up all the sources databases and everything is you know very important and make sure your target environments are configured you know well you know you don't start the migration without making sure that you are you know office 365 is you know fully configured and all the features are enabled for the users you know to have a better experience and then during the migration how do you, you know start the migration now do you have a staging environment you know which mirrors the production or you know should i hook up to the production and then start the migration those are all the different you know considerations we do 
in during the migration and then once the migration is now completed how do we perform the quality check you know how do we take the feedback from the owners and how do we communicate to the internal as well as external users all that you know we'll have to plan for it and in a typical migration project there are six steps one is a pre migration analysis and how do we map office 65 features let's say if i take e room as an example in e room if there is a folder which is at a top level the folder is mapped to a document library in office 65 or in sharepoint how do we do that feature mapping you know and then how do we define the migration approach and set up the migration tools and any other custom tools we may have to build and you know execute the perform you know execute the pilot migration then you document those learnings and then plan for your you know regular wave based or phase based no migration and uh, you know how do we perform the post migration checks okay. these are all the six steps i'm going to be you know walking through every single of them you know giving little more details i'm sure you will have more questions it's a lot of information um always you no know, post those questions and then we can always you know reach out and schedule a follow up with you so what contributes to pre migration analysis you know first of all you know you define your objective before even you start the project you know, is it is the like to like migration or is it something that you know you want to restructure we always recommend it is the time for always for anyone to relook at the architecture and maybe you know change the information architecture you know and take only the relevant content uh, do the content analysis and then figure out okay what is the content which is not even touched for maybe last 18 months last two years and review those and you know figure out you know is it really valid content or or you know is it the same content you know which i don't want to you know carry it right and document your success criteria and uh, complete you know metrics of the current system you know have the complete you no know, metrics of the system and conduct user interview and users may not want all of it users may want slightly better features user may want certain features at any cost right you know from the legacy platform okay i'm used to this particular you know you know feature maybe you now i want to have the same or similar feature in the target no environment right so conduct you know those interviews and then identify what all the you know critical sites and what all the vip sites let's say there are certain sites used by cfo organization uh, which may be you know very critical and there is no downtime you know you know you can anticipate um, so plan for all of those and communication is the key how do you identify the site owners you know how do you communicate with them when do you communicate the migration start and when do you communicate the content freeze date and uh, when do you communicate the go live date all of that so there is a you know uh, a set of communication on channel so identify all of them source and destination feature mapping um depending on the source system you know you have whether it is a file net or lotus notes or even sharepoint on prem uh, what are all the you know features available in your source system and then you know do a mapping of that in the office 365 you know um, just a simple example a sharepoint workflow in you know in sharepoint on prem environment may not need to be implemented as a sharepoint workflow in office 365 you know you can leverage microsoft flow for that um so it's a time you know for you to kind of rethink about it and then you know raise the new feature set you know provided and not kind of you know uh, struggling with the old features you know what you have right migration tool evaluation this is a you know critical step there are various migration you know, tools available like if you know docker you know is there you no know, you have fly you have you know sharegate you have metalogic so each comes with its own in you know, a licensing you know tag and then each of them you know has a pros and cons um you know some of them you know may migrate certain features you no know, very well some of them may support high speed migration leveraging azure so do you have azure subscription you know for configuring high speed so all of that you know has to be analyzed and uh, how do you want to you know take the security you know do you want to scrap the security and you know start over with the security because the security in the legacy platform is a mess that you know that's the call in love you like to take how do you manage your you know collision you know during the migration and 
how do you want to schedule it? Money with a big bang approach, which I normally don't recommend to any customer I have worked so far. I always do recommend you know having a scheduled you know wave based migration. Um, and you know, do you want to you know migrate site collection as a whole, uh, as an example, or you know, do you want to you know break sub sites and migrate them in a flat structure which is recommended in Office 365? And uh, how do you plan for your incremental migration? So all of this contributes to um, migration tool evaluation. And pilot migration, like I said, no, choose the sites with you know different complexity levels, not just you no know, choose the simplest one. And uh, uh, always you know, choose sites with different unique feature sets and figure out you know, who owns those sites and figure out users you know, who volunteer to try out new features in you know a new system don't you know try to you know force someone into starting in a pilot and you know and then you know if you have to re remigrate that's something that now you'll have to always plan in a pilot migration not every time you may get it right in the first time you may you know plan to remigrate you know, multiple times um don't just you know, do the pilot and then I'll leave it. You know, always document all the learning and uh, tweak the process, tweak the migration of process based on the learning you know, from the pilot. And you know, tweak your communication strategy, tweak your you know, um, you know, migration methodology, tweak your you know, uh, approach and everything. Once the migration is you now complete, um, you know, always you know, govern, you know, Put together the governance no plan and uh, uh, ensure the user trainings are scheduled well in advance. And if you have to have brown back sessions, all of that. And then uh, always, it's a good idea, you know, to take feedback from users, you know, and figure out how well they are able to adopt to the new systems. And uh, um, it's a time for kind of enabling newer features as well, not just you not know, trying to stick to the migrated content. You may want to try enable. You know the newer features and see you know how it you know helps them. And decommissioning is you know always a bigger task in bigger organization. So plan to you know decommission the old environment you know after keeping it as a you know coexistence you know, period for some time. Then always you know have a maintenance you know, plan and uh, you know we always recommend you know having a managed services to continue maintain and you know do some small enhancements in the new system. There are you no know, different, you know, deliverables. You no, know, we kind of you no know, provide to the customers. One is fully configured migration you no know, form, which can be used for any leftover migrations. You no, know, you want to do it, you know, at your own pace. And uh, the inventory for your source as well as the destination and uh, mapping migration mappings, and then the Office 365 feature mapping and migration tool. Each migration tool has its own profile mechanism. For each site, you may want to you know, customize the profile. So we leave those profile you know, configurations. And we do leave the documentation in terms of you know, your inventory, your migration methodology and approach and all of that specific to your need. So we leave behind all of them you know, for the customers. Um, one of the case study, uh, this is you know for a large migration. The customer was you know, uh, kind of you know, having a challenge on, they, they have, you know, Content which is of large size, five terabytes of content in their legacy e room. E room, as you are aware, you know, it has well passed the support deadline you know, from the vendor itself. So, um, the customer you know, had an immediate need to move out of the e room and then move them to three different you know, platforms one is uh, Shepon Online and another one is Shepon On Prem, and then you know, their archival system as well. So, we helped the customer envision this whole solution and then you know, we helped them. Um, with the communication strategy, and you know, this customer is a healthcare-based customer based in uh, North Carolina, and uh, you know, uh, this is one of the you know very successful and smooth migration projects even the customer have experience. And um, just you know, a couple of you know slides, I will just want to show you how the typical resource you know breakdown you know, looks like you know for our you know migration project. And you know how the project schedule you know looks like. So this is kind of a you know, typical roles and responsibilities of you know different uh, roles involved. 
from a migration stream standpoint. I don't know there are various roles in the customer end. This is specific to the migration team, a vendor like a, a senior consultant, you know, and a project manager, techno business analyst. We can customize it, but this is how the typical, you know, team, you know, looks like. And uh, a project schedule, depending on your you know, content volume and then your, you know, complications on the communication strategy and, um, you know, how well you know you want to set the framework you know for future migration there are you know different you know schedule but this is one you know typical you know schedule uh for uh, let's say uh, maybe one to you know two terabytes of content this is how your typical you know migration schedule may look like right uh and it completely depends on the customer but this is just a generic you know guideline and kind of you know uh, giving you some kind of an idea how a migration project may look like and it's not your, you know, typical weekend upgrade activity. And uh, pretty much, you no, know, we were able to cover it, you know, on time. And uh, I know we have a couple of minutes. Uh, Noor, uh, over to you. If there are any questions, so I can take it now. Hey, thanks, Madan. Uh, that's really uh, uh, informative. And uh, again, thanks for taking up uh, that customer story. Certainly exciting. So I have a few questions. So uh, the first and foremost coming from uh, Mark is, uh, what if I mix uh, uh, the infra and content to be migrated? Will that process, I means will the process that we are discussing will work, will still work with that or not? Just wanted to learn a little bit more about that. Excellent question, excellent question. Thanks, thanks, no, no, for that. Uh, and thanks, Mark, no, for that question. Yes, um, you know, Though you know, I have mentioned infra migration, content migration, and our app modernization as three different uh, scenarios. But uh, in a typical customer environment, you know, we do see mix of uh, you know either two or you know sometimes you no know, all three of them. Right? Uh, customers may want to do you know may want to start all of them at once or maybe you know save them. But you know we do uh, see both infrastructure migration and content migration in a lot of you know scenarios and uh, this framework certainly you know supports all three of them you know it, it's the combination of either two or three in this framework you no know, absolutely supports hope that thanks for them yeah certainly it does so the other question uh, uh, sorry the this question is uh, is from john and uh, he asked what is a typical project timeline for content migration projects uh, typically we have seen or like for example the one that you were referring right now sure sure yeah maybe you know uh, i can just you know, go back to this in the schedule so um typically there are you know more than the time when i want to you know kind of talk about various phases uh, and then maybe you know come back to the timeline so planning is something that you no know, you need to have a you know phase for you know planning depending on your complexity and then depending on your preparedness maybe in a, anywhere from two to four weeks. And then, you know, we need to, you know, gather a requirement, uh, not just from the IT, and also, you know, from key business, you know, stakeholders, as well as, you know, some power users. And uh, we do, you know, have, you know, need to plan for a design or a, you know, or a migration approach phase, migration strategy phase. That's something, you know, you'll have to plan for it. And then uh, always, always, you know, plan for a pilot phase. And if you have some room, you know, ensure, you know, you have a gap between, uh, you know, you have some cushion between pilot and the start of the migration so that you have time to incorporate any feedback, you know, from the pilot into your own process to kind of, you know, make sure that your process is solid enough to continue the migration. So 18 weeks, you know, bar, which is mentioned as a deploy phase in this case, um, what we typically do is it's not 18 full weeks in one phase. It actually is a multiple waves within them. Each wave typically will be like, you know, every four weeks, you know, we want to, you know, complete, let's say, um, you know, half a terabyte of your you know, migration, right? Depending on the complexity, but I know I'm just you know, giving some kind of a guideline. Half a terabyte every four weeks. And then at the end of the fourth week, we do the cutover migration and, you know, we move on to the next set of, you know, sites or workspaces or, you know, e-rooms or, whatever it is based on your source environment. So this is how a typical uh, migration schedule and all looks like. 
So thanks, Madan. Uh, so this, I think, uh, personally, this question comes from me. Uh, so uh, like having uh, talking about the customer story, like uh, will you be able to uh, share some insights, uh, mostly in terms of challenges that you have faced uh, in content the migration project like this? And how did we overcome some of these uh, challenges? Sure, sure, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question, and in fact, uh, <laughs> we may need another webinar, you know, just to talk about the challenges, you know, we faced, you know, it's it's a lot of them, uh, but, you know, I can kind of, you know, touch upon a few of them, you know, first is, uh, you know, URLs will, you know, are going to be changing, so how do we make sure that, you know, there are tons of documents, you know, with absolute, you know, URLs of the legacy system, you know, how do we, you know, manage it now when i start migrating users will say no all those documents do not work anymore so we do have a url um, you know module you know we have developed a module which can help customers you know redirect from their old systems to the new system so that um, you know they are not the business is not disrupted when we start the migration right so that's you know one typical challenge and then the other challenges you know will be First of all, how do we find out the owner? You know, a site was created 15 years back by somebody, right? And they are no longer with the company. Company got acquired by somebody else, and uh, you know, organization structure has changed four times in the last 15 years. So, who really owns this content, right? So that's the biggest challenge. And you know, we have you know mechanisms to figure out how you know who could be the potential owner. Right, and uh, we do have multiple approaches and approaches in figuring out you know, who could be the potential owner. Those are all you know some of the challenges, and I can uh, go on and on. But as I said, you know, in the interest of time, you know, we may need like a separate session, or you know, maybe we, if anyone is you know interested, we can always have a follow up uh, to kind of you know give them all of our you know inputs on um, you know how do we you know how did we overcome those challenges and what kind of challenges they should anticipate. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Madan, uh, for clarifying on that and sharing some of the experience. Uh, really helpful. Uh, I know we are two minutes over. Uh, again, thanks everyone for taking time to join this webinar, and uh, uh, I hope you find found it informative and useful. Madan, thanks again for taking this session. Uh, have a good day. Thank you, everyone.